After months of rumor and speculation, AMD's Zen 2 processors are here. But are they fast? Yeah, they're super fast. Today, we are not here to talk about how speedy they are. We want to take a look at how they got faster. And what even is processor speed? Welcome to another episode of Upscaled, where we break down the things that make our favorite gadgets so speedy. In our last episode, we took a look at the new Mac Pro, and I was surprised to learn from you that there is some serious love still out there for the decade-old 2010-era Mac Pros, and a couple horror stories about the graphics cards on the Trash Can Pro straight up just burning out. Also, thank you to the folks who gave us a heads up about the sockets for the 8-pin power connectors besides the MPX connectors on the new Mac Pro which means you shouldn't need an adapter from Apple. While that does give it a bit more flexibility to upgrade, it looks like the MPX modules will block those 8-pin ports, so I'm still a little apprehensive about the long-term prospects of that machine. Today, though, we are going to be talking about AMD. The company has just released its new computer processors, coupling a new design with a new manufacturing process. We've clarified this before, but just to make sure you've got the terms down, these are the third processors AMD has released under the name Ryzen, which is a brand name, but the second version of their Zen architecture, which is the code name for the fundamental design that underpins all of their new processors. So Ryzen 3, Zen 2. Got it? Good. Zen originally launched in 2017, and it replaced AMD's ill-fated bulldozer architecture. Bulldozer came out about six years earlier in 2011, and it was a disappointment from launch. The first bulldozer flagship, the 8150, was the first consumer 8-core processor, but AMD paired those 8 cores into four so-called modules, a hybrid design that had some parts of the cores sharing resources. In theory, this could have eliminated redundant transistors and made for a chip that was simpler to manufacture and more efficient, but the reality was a mess. The shared circuits led to bottlenecks, where the cores had to essentially wait in line to execute programs, and this logjam meant that, bizarrely, turning half of the cores off and running the 8150 as a quad-core design made it faster in a variety of workloads. There were a number of other problems, including cache latency and poor branch prediction, and we will explain what all of these things mean, but for now, I want to return to Zen 2. Now, we haven't put them through their paces yet ourselves, so take these figures with caution, but Zen 2 processors seem to bring a serious increase in speed over the previous generation. The most impressive feature is that AMD is now offering up to 12 cores on its new flagship processor, with a 16-core version coming in the fall. Considering it was just a few years ago that four cores was still the standard for high-end computer processors, and this is a huge increase in processing potential. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, there are a ton of factors that determine how quickly a chip can operate. So, for AMD's new Zen 2 chips, let's break it down. For one, they just run at a faster speed. The previous flagship, the Ryzen 2700X, had a base speed of 3.7 GHz and could boost up to 4.3 GHz. The new flagship, the 3900X, manages a base speed of 3.8 GHz and a boost of 4.6 GHz. These speeds are examples of clock speeds, meaning they are a measure of how quickly the CPU can execute its most basic operations. Side note, clock speed is pretty much a literal term. Motherboards have actual quartz crystals on them that vibrate at a defined frequency, just like the crystals in a watch. This frequency, which is typically 100 MHz for a Ryzen CPU, is transmitted all around the motherboard and used to coordinate the various parts of the computer. To set the processor speed, the signal is run through multipliers to reach the target CPU speed. Each tick of the CPU clock sends a burst of current through the transistors in the processor, and that runs the most fundamental operations in a computer. Every program you run on your computer is translated down from the code some programmer wrote into the machine code that tells your processor exactly what instructions to run. These instructions are the most basic operations a chip can perform. Things like read these memory values, or multiply these numbers together, store these results, or compare these values, and so on. Intel and AMD processors both use an instruction set called x86, while most mobile devices use a different set called ARM. Now, I want to talk more about instruction sets another time, but for now, just know these are the fundamental operations your computer is performing, and a faster clock speed means you can perform more of them per second. The basic process a CPU core goes through is this. 
First, it will fetch an instruction or read it from where it's been stored on the chip. Then it will decode it and decide how to apply that instruction, and then it executes it. This process generally takes a few clock cycles to complete, but modern chips have a lot of tricks that help them execute instructions faster. And that brings us to our next measure of speed. In addition to increasing the frequency its chips run at, AMD is also claiming they've improved another crucial metric, instructions per clock, or IPC. This is essentially a measure of the chip's efficiency. It says, all things being equal, in two chips with identical frequency, the one with the higher IPC will execute more instructions per second. This is a metric that AMD has struggled with for more than a decade. When Bulldozer launched back in 2011, it turned out to perform at a worse IPC rate than the chips it was supposed to replace. We can all be glad that AMD has helped push the CPU industry to where it is today with up to 16 cores being within reach of consumers, but in a way they've had to go with this multi-core approach because they've largely lagged behind Intel in IPC for years. Given two chips of the same speed and the same number of cores, Intel's offering would tend to get more work done in a given time. While AMD has shown their chips can be hugely fast in so-called parallel workloads that use multiple cores at once, things like content creation, cryptography, scientific computing, and AI training, better IPC just makes everything faster. Single core performance, which is the measure of how fast an individual core in a processor can crunch data, is just a combination of instructions per clock times clock speed. AMD managed to improve IPC with a few tricks. One of the biggest issues in CPU design these days is efficiency and latency. Any cycles the processor spends having to move or read data is time it could be spending running instructions. So a lot of current design focuses on ways to keep as much of the CPU engaged as possible. In the case of Zen 2, one thing AMD did was just to increase the speed data could be shuttled around the chip. CPUs have a ton of tiny memory stores called registers all over them, and these are where the calculations they run actually takes place. And AMD just increased the number of registers and boosted their bandwidth. Beyond registers, modern processors also have super fast memory built into the chip itself, which is called the cache. Cache is described in levels, usually L1, L2, L3, and maybe onwards, with each step up having more storage, but a slower access speed. Chips use tools like prefetching and predictors to try to have the data the CPU is going to need ready in the cache before it's called for. But if things get misaligned or jumbled and processing stalls while data has to be retrieved from the RAM, that can majorly slow down a computer. Zen's design actually only exacerbates this problem. In some previous Ryzen chips, only a few cores actually had direct access to the RAM, and with the new chiplet design, there's potential latency overhead from every signal just having to get routed through multiple little chiplets. The solution? AMD just doubled the amount of L3 cache in Zen 2 to 16 megabytes per core complex, which is generally four cores. This newly expanded cache is a pretty brute force solution, but it's effective. The larger cache is slower to access. Think about it like searching for a book on a single shelf versus in a library. But more cache space does mean that data can stay in the L3 longer before it has to be overwritten. In early tests, this expanded cache is actually responsible for some pretty big improvements. But on the downside, AMD is now trying to rebrand L3 as Game Cache, which is just a truly silly name. Now, the last thing AMD did is improve its branch predictor. Instructions need to execute in a sequence, but considering each instruction can take a large number of cycles to complete, CPUs get a massive boost by starting to run the next instruction before the previous one completes. To do this in the same way the prefetcher needs to guess what bit of data the CPU will need next, the branch predictor has to guess at the next instruction that's going to need to run. And the penalty for mistakes is huge. With everything running smoothly, a modern CPU can execute one instruction per clock or more, but if there's a mistake, the instruction pipeline has to be purged, and it may take 20 cycles or more before another instruction clears. Considering the potential 20-fold penalty for errors, tiny differences in predictor accuracy can make a huge difference in total speed. For the fastest cache, the L1, Ryzen uses something called a perceptron, which is essentially a really basic neural network that's been fed a data set and uses it to try to guess what the next instruction needed will be. 
New in these new Zen 2 cores is a TAGE predictor, which is used on the intermediate L2 cache. TAGE here is a pretty tortured acronym for Tagged Geometric History Length. To wildly simplify things, the TAG predictor keeps a running history of the instructions that were recently run on the CPU and tries to guess what's coming next based on that recent history. So why weren't all these improvements implemented in the last generation? Well, a lot of it just comes down to physical space. As AMD has moved to a 7 nanometer manufacturing process from 12 and 14 nanometers, its CPU cores take up less area on the chip, and that leaves more room for all this expanded cache space. All these improvements, plus a host more, have pushed AMD to claim the instructions per clock crown for the first time in years, if only by a couple percent. While things are looking up for AMD fans, Intel does have new chips coming out this fall, and the early rumors is that they may bring another 10 to 15% improvement in IPC themselves. Still, it will be at least 2020 before Intel releases high-end powered chips based on these new designs, and AMD isn't sitting still either. They have told us that the design for Zen 3 has already been finalized. After years of Nvidia and Intel getting to set the terms of the market, we are finally seeing AMD back in a corrective role. Ryzen has already helped push Intel to offer more cores and more performance for less money, and just the threat of AMD's upcoming Navi GPUs pushed Nvidia to release their super graphics cards. Every time AMD announces a new product, the best case scenario is we not only get a faster part, it also forces the competition to either improve or lower their prices, and that's exactly what we're seeing with Zen 2 and Navi. Let us know if there's anything else in this episode you'd like us to dig deeper into, and subscribe for all our future episodes. We are planning to take a look at AMD's RDNA graphics architecture, the future of chips, and a host of other things in the next few weeks, so stick around. <music>